Good morning, everyone. This is Jim Chastain with Easy Power. And this is our refresher session for Tuesday. Our topic today is going to be the uh, some features regarding short so circuit faults that are referred to as symmetrical and asymmetrical currents. Uh, I think most of us are familiar with the fact that motor contribution is uh, a, a most likely source for asymmetrical currents during a fault. Now, there's, there's a DC offset is generated as the motor's rotating field coasts to a stop. It starts to act like a generator. And uh, we understand that these are small but important. In fact, the IEEE model for arc flash requires that the, the system be analyzed both with and without uh, these contributions being included to see whether or not that it makes a difference on the arc flash instant energy. Um, because it could have an impact on the maximum stress during the initial part of a fault. And uh, part of the, t the study is to analyze whether or not the system can withstand that maximum stress and whether the contribution of the motor uh, plays a significant part. So, But unlike most discussions on this topic, I'm not going to be spending uh, a lot of time on a mathematical proof. What I am interested in is understanding a little bit more about the other sources for this this uh, parameter uh, that we refer to as asymmetrical current. So just real briefly, uh, what we have here is an analog source, a rotating AC source for voltage. And if we consider this with just one third of a three phase signal, and we experience a fault at any point in the waveform, there will be, because of the rotating motor, an effort by the inductive source to continue that current flow that uh, was ex experienced in the system. And as the motor uh, windings, the magnetic fields collapse, it drives some additional current through the fault that would not necessarily have been there before. And because this is an additive amount to the existing fault current, it produces an a, a DC offset. And so what the asymmetrical waveform is the result of the existing sh short fault AC current that we see, and then this additional bump that's added by the motor collapse, winding collapse, which lasts uh, probably on the order of five, five cycles at most. And so what we see in the, as far as waveform is a logarithmic decline. And that's referred to as the, the asymmetry of the fault current. OK. So now that I feel that I kind of uh, relate that primarily to, to motors, it came up in a rec recent conversation with a friend of mine who works in a uh, semiconductor plant that he really didn't think he had to worry too much about arc flash because he did not have that many heavy motor loads in his system. Well, aside from the fact that um, I, I feel he's mistaken about the importance of arc flash in his particular case, it dawned on me in terms of a fault in that type of a system, which has few motors, do you still get the asymmetrical fault currents and if that's the case, where do they come from? What system parameters actually affect the value of asymmetrical currents outside of the motors? So that's kind of what prompted this, this conversation or this example. So what I'm going to do is pull up what I refer to as my arc flash epiphany example, which, um, which led me to understand, I guess, in greater detail exactly why the arc flash hazard is, is important in the industry and uh, look at the, what the system looks like with and without motors for this particular example. So give me just a second here. And so what we're looking at, and the reason I, I call this my epiphany example, it was actually a conversation I had with an electrician in Oklahoma and he had one protective device and he had to label all these above ground 
uh, distribution elements for his downhole pumps in an oil field. And the significance was he had one relatively short cable run, and at the same time he had one very long cable run. And so as we looked at his short circuit current, and we fault the buses here, uh, first of all, the current, we see that he has uh, relatively high current in the short cable run, relatively low current in the long cable run, and we calculate incident energy, we see that the energy, energy goes up dramatically comparing the transformer connection with the short cable run, and even more so when we connect, uh, compare it with the long cable run. So this is what made me understand that it's not just impedance, it's not just voltage, but the trip conditions, because we have only one protective device. If this bus were to fault with that very low current, it would take much longer for the uh, protective device to trip. Okay, if you, if you want to talk more about that, by all means, send me an email and we can get into details. It's a fun discussion. Easy Power allows me, if when I'm in database editor, to con condition the, uh, the system to include with and without motor contributions. So as it stands, when I short the bus, look at my short circuit current, you can see by virtue of the fact that there's current coming back from the motor during a fault that right now we're looking at with motor contribution. If I uncheck this particular block and fault the buses again, then I get no motor, motor contribution and now all I have are the upstream uh, fault currents coming from the utility. So now the question is, do I still have asymmetric current when I have no motors? When I go to the short circuit options and look at the one line output, in other words, the display that's on the one line, I see that I have the ability to select between symmetrical and asymmetrical. So as I apply that, I see that there's some asymmetrical current. It's hard to tell how much of that is symmetrical and how much is asymmetrical. So if I show max and apply, now the the line on top is just a straight symmetrical current. The value on the bottom is the max asymmetrical. So what you can see is the difference here is the uh, essentially the asymmetrical content. And if we look at how long that lasts, you can see that at five cycles, it pretty much declines so that at five cycles, there's no difference between the two values. Okay, so this kind of gets me some uh, sense that there's more sources for asymmetrical current rather than just the motors. So let's kind of go back and, and see kind of where I took this conversation. So what if we modify this example and, and do some what ifs to see where the asymmetrical current's coming from? For instance, let's try, it's obviously coming from upstream so let's vary the impedance ratio on the transformer, which would make sense, and see what happens to the asymmetrical current. And let's see what happens if we vary the impedances of the utility. And that's kind of where I took this example. So let me kind of jump into that. So we're going to close this and open up another one that I've already modified. All right, so what I've done here is I've got two utility sources uh, one with a very high stiffness or high X over R and one with a very low X over R. The ratio X over R is impedance versus resistance. And likewise in my transformers, my typical of 5.75 uh, impedance ratio, the Z impedance uh, in one transformer and then compare it against another one that has a higher Z impedance ratio um, and see what happens to my my contribution currents down here. So let's start with a normal utility. We'll go into the short circuit focus. We're going to start with my normal utility and open up the other one, start with a normal, normal transformer and fault the currents. And so now I'm still looking at asymmetrical on the bottom and symmetrical on the top. And I can see that I've got well, if I look at the transformer, at the utility, I've got almost 50% contribution from the asymmetrical side of things. If I look at the secondary, I've got probably 25%, greater than 25%. And 
And if I look at this relatively short cable run, I've got 20, at least 20% of contribution due to asymmetrical effect. And again, it lasts pretty much less than five cycles as I look at the five cycle uh, reading. All right, so now what happens if I change the uh, transformer and make it a uh, lossier transformer? So let's open that one, close this one. I can see that, all right, I have greater contribution here on the short. No matter what I do, it doesn't seem like there's much change because of this long impedance. And, and if I look at the transformer content, I have, um, in fact, what I want to do is look at my, collect the data for this. All right, so I got the two transformers that I'm collecting data from. On the normal transformer, which is the 5.75%, I can see at the uh, the main bus, I've got a total symmetrical current of 565 and a total asymmetric current of 268797. And then for the long run, I have a 43339 and the 4.421 for my asymmetric current. If I now take that out of the circuit and put in my IRZ uh, transformer, now I have on the the main bus, 18,228 for my symmetric current, 23,831 for my asymmetric, and on my long uh, cable run, I have pretty much the same, 4.3236, and then for asymmetric, I have 434. All right, so what I see is um, a 6,000 amp Con DC contribution on the main, which is right at the transformer. And I see at the long bus, I only have an 82 amp DC contribution. Likewise, on the main, under the lossy, or the, uh, yeah, the lossier transformer, I see a 5,000 amp, a little bit less contribution because of the asymmetrical component. And uh, a little bit more if I if my math is right, but it's in the it's in the noise level when it comes to the the long impedance cable run. So now if I look at the same same comparison for my utility change, in this case the utility has a uh, has a much lower x over r ratio. For the first one, we're looking at 150 x over r. And we should end up with in the same uh, in the same transformer, effectively the same number. So for symmetrical current, we got 2565. For asymmetrical, we have 26 26897. And for the long run, we have 4339 and 44421. Uh, 4, as soon as we change utilities, though on that same transformer, we'll see that with a much lower X over R ratio, we have slightly more uh, symmetrical current and slightly, almost exactly the same, I guess it's slightly less, 70 amps less on the asymmetric. And then when we look at the long, it's, it almost disappears as far as the asymmetrical imprint, uh, influence. All right, so here's where I collected the data. I did a subtraction here to come up with my uh, DC offset. And that kind of brings me to a, a comparison now. Without any motors in the system, what really controls the asymmetrical uh, component of any fault current, and it becomes obvious that the transformer ends up being the biggest player as far as that contribution, and the farther we are, or the more impedance we have from the transformer, the uh, less that particular influence is. So with this little experiment, what did we really learn? And, and this may be a duh, but it reinforces the fact that there is some, I think, misunderstanding in terms of what the what the fault contribution is, especially during the first half cycle. 
um, a lower Z transformer will generate high symmetrical contributions close to the transformer. The utility sip stiffness, surprisingly, has less effect, so it's somewhat absorbed or buffered by the condition or uh, quality of our transformer between us and the utility. The higher circuit impedance reduces the asymmetry uh, effects uh, during longer impedance runs. So when we had a thousand feet between us and the transformer, there was hardly any change in, uh, in symmetrical versus asymmetrical. The bottom line is that this can be, depending upon where we are in the system, the components that we're utilizing the system, there can be a fairly complex calculation involved. And what we will touch on next week, what we will specify, specifically get into next week, is how the Easy Power Smart Duty fe feature takes care of all this, has the ability to show us the details, but more importantly, has the ability to show us the results very quickly without us having to second guess what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, and we'll see as we get further down the road that we expect the generator to be similar to the utility source unless it's behind the, uh, the transformer. So it depends how much buffering there is between the generator as a less stiff energy source, if you will, uh, in terms of the uh, energy that's stored in the transformer. This actually brings up another point, and I, I don't think we, we talk about this enough, but that is all of this, all of these calculations, all of these models, all of the IEEE data, all of the NFPA 70E uh, regulations and specifications on using the models basically are dealing with estimates. And as we do data collection, especially on an existing system, there's some data that is less critical than others and some data that we can use some rules of thumb or some assumptions or some estimates and others, other pieces of data, specifically when it gets to the higher uh, inductive content components, be it motors, generators, transformers, or utility sources, that we need to be as, as precise or as conservative as we can when we do our estimations so that we're, we're not under serving the fact that we're dealing with people's safety when we're doing these calculations. So um, I guess this answered several questions for me, and I, I'm kind of anxious to get back to my friend and talk about how these, um, these understandings or these assertions affect his particular system. So that concludes what we were going to cover today. I appreciate everyone's attention. We're going to check the, uh, the question list. Uh, please feel free to uh, investigate all of our resources on easypower.com. You're welcome to contact us uh, at sales at easypower.com for additional information or to get a, a demonstration of any of the tools that we, uh, we supply and uh, I invite you to attend all the webinars we have weekly and that are recorded on the uh, website. Another, another point to just touch on, uh, we, basically we have a group of engineering services that people very frequently utilize for customized training, for a backup check, if you will, an engineering QA that we can review files and make recommendations on either modeling technique or an analysis uh, completion or accuracy, and very frequently uh, help people, especially if they're uh, less experienced in doing studies or if they're out there kind of working on their own. And it can provide uh, nice, uh, I guess, frame of mind or a nice boost in your confidence when you know that you are, you're on the right path.